Three battles every chosen one must fight in this last days. Have you ever felt a stirring in your spirit, a sense that God has something special planned for you and that He wants to use you for His purpose? The world is entering a critical phase and God is calling His chosen ones to prepare for the challenges ahead. When we refer to these last days, we mean the time prophesied in Scripture, a period filled with great trials and opportunities for believers before Christ's return. Now, more than ever, prepared believers are crucial. This is a season where every child of God must contend for their faith and stand their ground according to the Word of God. But are you ready? Are you prepared to fight the good fight of faith in these last days? If you feel unprepared, doubt yourself, struggle with temptations, or question your capability, know that you are not alone. Today, we're going to explore three essential spiritual battles every chosen one must face, which help refine and prepare you for God's purpose. By the end of this video, you'll understand your purpose better and learn practical ways to overcome these challenges. This discussion is for anyone on their spiritual journey, whether you're just starting or have been on the path for a while. Before we start, if you're looking to deepen your faith and pursue your divine calling, make sure to subscribe. Number one, the battle for identity. This is the first crucial battle you must conquer if you want God to use you in these last days. It's about understanding and embracing your divine purpose. Let's start with Jeremiah 1, 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. This verse reminds us that God has a plan for each of us, even before we're born. Let's look at a relatable biblical example, Moses. When God called him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt, Moses struggled with his identity. He questioned his abilities saying, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Exodus 3.11 Think about your daily life. You might be a student facing pressure to fit in, even if it means compromising your beliefs. Or perhaps you're a professional, feeling the need to hide your faith to advance your career. Maybe you're a parent, wondering how to instill Christian values in your children when the world teaches something different. These are all identity battles. When you're the only one declining that drink at the office party or choosing to spend Sunday at church instead of the big game, you're fighting for your identity in Christ. Consider 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. This is who you are, chosen, royal, holy. It might not feel like it when you're scrolling through social media, comparing yourself to others, but God says you're special to him. So how do you win this battle? Start by knowing who God says you are. Create a spiritual identity card. Write down verses about your identity in Christ. When you're tempted to conform to the world, maybe by engaging in office gossip or compromising your integrity for a quick gain, look at your card. Remind yourself of who you really are. The battle for identity is foundational if you aim to be used by God in these last days. You must maintain your identity in Christ, even if it means going against the grain of this fallen world. Despite the pressure to conform and commit sins, remember that God is watching. He sees your efforts to uphold your identity and values, even when they clash with worldly norms. Assuredly, God will reward your faithfulness, making you a beacon of light in the darkness. This steadfastness not only prepares you for further challenges like doubt and temptation, but also strengthens your spiritual foundation. We'll discuss these challenges more in upcoming content. Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God's not done with you yet. He's shaping you for his purpose. Now that we have discovered our true identity, 
What do we do when doubts creep in? It's time to face another challenge that threatens our purpose and destiny. But before we dive in, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to our channel. This way, you won't miss out on future videos like this one. Number two, overcoming doubt and fear. This is a struggle that every believer faces, especially when stepping into their divine calling. Maybe it's something you're probably facing right now. Maybe you're a college student sensing God's call to choose a different major, but you're afraid of disappointing your parents. Or perhaps you're a working professional feeling led to start a ministry, but doubting if you have what it takes. Some of you might be stay-at-home parents, hearing God's whisper to foster or adopt, yet fearing the challenges it might bring. These doubts and fears are real. They can paralyze you, keeping you up at night, making you second-guess every decision. Fear might be telling you to play it safe, to stick with what you know. But here's the truth. Those very doubts could be signposts, pointing to the great things God has planned for you. Let's look at a powerful example from the Bible, Gideon. When God called him to lead Israel against the Midianites, Gideon's first response was pure doubt. He said, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. Judges 6.15 Sound familiar? We often question our abilities when faced with big challenges. But here's the thing. God doesn't just call us and leave us to figure it out alone. He equips us. Remember David facing Goliath? On paper, it looked impossible. But David knew something crucial. He declared, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. 1 Samuel 17:37. David's confidence came from remembering God's faithfulness in the past. This battle connects closely with our identity in Christ, which we discussed earlier. When we truly understand who we are in God's eyes, doubt and fear lose their grip on us. As 2 Timothy 1, 7 reminds us, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So, how do we practically overcome doubt and fear? Start by creating a God's Faithfulness Journal. Write down times when God has come through for you, no matter how small. When doubt creeps in, read through this journal. Surround yourself with faith-filled people who can encourage you. And most importantly, saturate your mind with God's promises. Memorize scriptures that speak directly to your fears. Isaiah 41, 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Remember, doubt may be part of the journey, but it doesn't have to be your destination. God is with you, strengthening and helping you every step of the way. As we move to our next battle, take a moment to reflect. What's one doubt you're facing right now, and which of God's promises can you stand on to overcome it? Overcoming our inner doubts gives us strength, but what about the temptations all around us? Number three, resisting worldly temptations. Our next crucial battle is resisting worldly temptations. In 1 John 2.15, 16 were warned, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, comes not from the Father but from the world. In our modern world, children and adults alike face immense pressure to compromise their values lured by the allure of fleeting luxuries and a lavish lifestyle. This pressure isn't limited to social circles, but is increasingly evident in the messages delivered from our pulpits. Many megachurches are now promoting a message that endorses materialism, appealing to the nature of fallen man. This is a battle that you and I must win. There is a rising tide of false teachings in these churches that glorify material wealth over spiritual richness. 
As children of God, it's crucial that we recognize and resist these messages if we wish to be truly used by God in these last days. Temptation often masquerades as materialism and consumerism. It could be that latest smartphone you don't really need but feel compelled to buy, or the pressure to match your neighbor's lifestyle. For some, it might manifest as cutting corners at work to gain a quick promotion. For others, it's about compromising personal values to fit in with a particular group. These temptations are not solely external pressures. As James 1.14 explains, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. This indicates that the battle against temptation is also an internal one, fought in the landscapes of our minds and hearts. Think of Joseph in Egypt. When Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him, he fled, saying, How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? Genesis 39, 9. Joseph's temptation was immediate and intense, just like the ones we face today. Remember how this connects to our previous battles? A strong sense of identity in Christ and faith that overcomes doubt are your first lines of defense against temptation. So how do we resist? First, recognize your vulnerable areas. Is it material possessions, popularity, career success at any cost? Next, create accountability. Find a trusted friend or mentor to keep you in check. Finally, and most importantly, saturate yourself with God's Word. As Psalm 119, 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. I encourage you today, no matter what challenges you face, especially those that test your faith, do not give in. Don't let the temptations of this world sway you and lead you down the wrong path. Remember, these material things are fleeting. They are not what define us. What truly lasts, what truly matters, is your purpose and destiny. God is counting on you to stand strong, to hold fast to your faith without compromise. Allow yourself to focus on the eternal, on the profound calling you have been given. Stand firm in your convictions, knowing that what awaits you is far greater than anything this world can offer. Your steadfastness now prepares you for an everlasting impact. So stay true to who you are and to the path God has laid out for you. As we wrap up today, let's reflect on the spiritual battles we've discussed, from resisting temptations to deepening our identity in Christ. Each battle strengthens our faith and equips us to handle life's challenges. Which of these battles resonates most with you? Share your struggles or victories in the comments below, and let's support each other during these challenging times. Remember, you are not alone. We are here to journey together. Consider how these battles have impacted your life. Have you faced temptations that tested your faith? Are you struggling with doubts? Whatever your experience, your story is important, and this community is here to listen and uplift. Take a moment to identify which battle strikes a chord with you the most. That's your starting point. Use the strategies we've discussed to face this challenge head on. Remember, every great warrior trains daily. To stay battle ready and deepen your understanding of God's word, make sure to subscribe. We're on this journey together, and I'll continue to provide biblical insights and practical tips weekly. Please act on what you've learned. Share in the comments which battle you're addressing this week. Let's support each other and grow in strength. Stay strong in the Lord until next time. Your greatest victories are just ahead.